Hello, this is Elizabeth Valencia, author of My Walk to the Water. This book was inspired by my time on Hilton Head Island, where I learned about the many threats to the loggerhead sea turtle. I hope you enjoy the story and learn more about sharing the beach with the turtles. Hello, my name is Elizabeth. My family is older than the dinosaurs. I spend my days swimming long distances, looking for food because I am very big and swimming takes a lot of energy. I eat jellyfish and blue crabs and like the crunch of conch that I crack with my beak and strong jaw muscles. I am a loggerhead sea turtle. Sometimes I have a seaweed salad. It is refreshing. I have a very large head and four strong flippers which propel me through the ocean. Many school children went to the government to share our beauty and the threats we experience daily that could lead to our extinction. As a result, I was named the state reptile of South Carolina, the place I call home. I was born 30 years ago on the Carolina barrier island called Hilton Head. I hatched in the middle of the night. I could see the Carolina moon in the sky and its beams led me to the warm water gently crashing on the sand where I was born. They say I have a built-in GPS system that brings me back to this shoreline to nest and have my own children. I have a rusty brown heart-shaped carapace, that's my top shell, and a yellow plastron, my bottom shell. I now weigh 250 pounds. I can swim 15 miles per hour with my featherweight bones and secret air pockets. I swim to Florida sometimes and once even went to the Azores and Africa on my way back to Hilton Head. I like the shelf along the coast that has ripples in the sand. I have to come up for air, so the shallow water is a great place for me to play and see other animals swimming around. In winter, I slow down and am able to go into deeper water because I can hold my breath for long periods of time when I am not swimming. This spring, I met a male turtle while swimming in Port Royal Sound. He nuzzled my nose to let me know I was special. Port Royal is a beautiful place to swim with wonderful water. It is full of good food and lots of friends who like to play. We decided it was time for us to have a family. A turtle family is very different. Most of our life is spent in the water. My mother crawled out of the water on a warm summer night in June. She had to pull herself up on the beach above the highest tide line and dig a pit with her back flippers. She left tracks in the sand. Then she gently dropped me in the hole. She dug in the dune called the nest with 120 other soft eggs, nearly the size of golf balls. A nest can be four feet long, which is almost as tall as you are. It took three hours for her to drop all the eggs into her nest. If you saw her, you might think she was crying, but it's just salt coming from her eyes. She swept sand over us with her back flippers to protect us from raccoons, dogs, ghost crabs, birds, ants, and people who might harm us. She slowly went back to the ocean because she was very tired and needed to float in the water. She stayed on the ocean shelf to rest and recover so she could lay her next family of eggs. 
she can make three to six nests over the summer, one every two weeks. Over time, we all grew inside our shells. We enjoyed feeling the warm sun, rain, and cool temperatures at night. We loved the rain because of the splashing sound it made on our nest. The rain cooled the sand and our shells. This was especially important because the cool nights meant we wouldn't just have sisters, but also brothers. When it is too hot, we only have sisters, and that doesn't help, help our families continue to grow. For two months, we stretched and grew. A carapace formed on our backs, and little flippers came out. We all had large heads, which we would need to crush shells and eat the juicy seafood as we grew. We were now only two inches long. Then we said, these eggs are not big enough to hold us any longer. We began to peck from the inside with our beaks, and our shells began to crack. We wiggled and twisted until they opened. We pushed the shells to the bottom of the nest so we could stand on them and made sure the whole family was free. We saw our brothers and sisters, and we somehow knew we had to get to the water before the sun woke up. Now only two inches long, we went scampering toward the sea. We sensed there was danger. Our walk to the water can be very dangerous with lots of obstacles. We might fall into holes in the beach like a moat children dig around a beautiful sandcastle. A ghost crab or seagull might grab us and try to eat us. We can mistake house lights for the reflections of the ocean at night. To help us, you can turn off lights and cover your flashlight with a red turtle filter. If we crawl towards land and not the water, we could get lost in the sand dune and may not survive. A hurricane could bring ferocious wind and waves. We would have to fight to get to the ocean. Those plastic shovels and bags would be obstacles that could now hit us on the way to the safety of the ocean. Sea turtle families are different from your family. Only one out of a thousand of us will survive. We have to be strong and get to the sea. If we are lucky and survive, we could live to be 100 years old. Mother didn't have time to warn us about the plastic floating in the water that shines like delicious shell jellyfish. My GPS is just developing. I am a baby, and I need your love and protection. You are much bigger than me, but one day I could be over 400 pounds. When I grow older, I will return to Hilton Head and see your children enjoying the island because of the care and protection you gave me many years ago. I will always trust your children and their families to care for my turtle family. I am like every child in the world. I want to live and enjoy this beautiful beach of Hilton Head Island, where my family has been coming for more than a thousand years. I love this precious Atlantic Ocean and all the good food it holds for me and my family. Thank you for taking care of my home and do have fun on the beach while I am growing and swimming in the sea. I hope we will see each other again one day as we share this world. In the meantime, before you go to bed, please put the beach to sleep, fill in the holes in the sand, pick up plastic and trash from the shore. Remember, no lights, fires, or fireworks after 10 o'clock at night, and always watch turtles from a distance. Please help make our journey safe. Putting the beach to sleep is just one way we can help the turtles. 
with climate change causing our ocean waters to rise and the coast welcoming more people every day, the turtles need our voice. I hope you'll share what you've learned with your friends and family. Thank you for listening.